That's okay. <laughs> if I'm a performing artist... I'm sorry? If I'm a performing artist... Performing artist. Yeah, right. and does your training and your practice and your craft count as sadhana? And if yes, is that enough? Does what count as sadhana? My training, mm -hmm. my practice and my craft and every single show that I do or every single rehearsal or everything that goes into it. Oh. What kind of performing artist? I'm an actor. Okay. So as you said, it's an act. Anything that you do with great involvement does something to you, all right? But there is a difference between doing an, in, an inward focused sadhana and an outward sadhana. It's not just for an actor. A manager can use his work as sadhana, a gardener can use his work as sadhana. Anybody who is doing whatever with absolute involvement, they can use it as a process of growth. But there is a distinct difference between doing external activity as sadhana and internal process as sadhana. What is the difference? External activity as sadhana is useful because you can do it throughout the day. And of course you have to do some activity. Making that also into your process of growth is important. But the reason for internal sadhana which has nothing to do with the outside is to create that inner space within you because your outside sadhana is subject to results, you can't help it. Suppose in the middle of your act you forgot your dialogue, you can't say, this is my sadhana, I forgot and it's fine, I'll still enjoy and grow. No, you will be demolished on that day, isn't it? So your outside sadhana is subject to a certain level of performance and result and appreciation and the monetary re returns and everything. But still it can be useful, it can be working for your well-being if you're doing it with absolute involvement. If there is involvement in anything, just your breathing, if you're absolutely involved, this will become your sadhana. You're walking, you're acting, you're anything. Involvement makes every act into a kind of growth. But still creating an inner space is very important because that's not subject to anything outside. Nobody need to clap their hands when you're meditating. Yes? You do your kriya, you're not expecting somebody to appreciate you at the end of it. It is not subject to any external reality and that's very important. That at least one aspect of your life is like this. It is not subject to anybody's appreciation or approval or whatever, but still you do it with absolute involvement. There are other dimensions to it. Apart from that, for you as a person to do something which has nothing to do with anybody around you is an important act that you have to perform every day. It's very important. So if you do that well, it'll be very easy to make your life's activity into your sadhana. If this inner space is not there, life's activity can slowly catch you up in such a way that uh, for a lot of people, the professions and whatever else they started with great passion after some time, it's killing them. It is. Well, most people on the planet, isn't it? Simply because there is no inner space. So all this in… you know, I'm not an expert in these things, but I remember this because uh, of something that came my way once. All this in one single sentence was uttered by Krishna. He said, yoga staha kuru karmani. It simply means, first establish yourself within you, then act. Then no action is a problem. You can fight a war, you can act, you can be a priest in the temple, you can cook, you can sweep, it doesn't matter what you do. But first establish yourself and do whatever you want. He's not restricting your action. He's saying do whatever you want, whatever is needed you do, but first establish yourself within yourself. Otherwise you're using external activity to make yourself who you are, which will be disastrous. Establish who you are, then act, no problem. But if you're using your activity to make yourself into something, if something comes in your way which doesn't allow you to become that, you will be destroyed. 
So don't try to be a yogi by teaching yoga. You become a yogi and then if people are interested, we will teach, otherwise we'll just close our eyes and sit. 